Welcome to the Viva Vegan Minisode, with me, Faye, and me, Izzy. So, for our viewers and listeners who haven't met Izzy before, tell us a little bit about yourself, Izzy. So, I work at Viva as an animal campaigner. Um, I work on campaigns such as the Muller Killer one that we've just had, and we went on the yogurts tour. But prior to me joining Viva as a campaigner, I worked with other organisations as a uh, grassroots activist, kind of working with animal activists and climate activists, and... Here I am now. <laughs> so we're really well suited to have her on the mini-sode, rounding up stories, particularly from an animal perspective. And that's what we're going to kick off with first today. We're going to talk a little bit about how pigeons can problem solve in a similar way to artificial intelligence. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's really cool. So, Izzy, it's a bit like pattern recognition, is that it right? It is, yeah. So basically, there were 24 pigeons that they used uh, for this study. I know pigeons were harmed in the studies. <laughs> very just, important. Just very important. <laughs> just to put that out there. Um, but they basically monitored how they could recognise patterns, and they recognised that basically it's very similar to how AI does it. Um, it's literally just fixing roots and uh, de- de- uh, deciphering those patterns and then uh, analysing what's right and what's wrong. And they were kind of like, they do the kind of control test, don't they? Yeah. Where they remove the food or the pellet exactly, or whatever it yeah. is to kind of get those. Yeah, get it was interesting. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's like incredibly interesting because like pigeons are seen as like pests and almost like rats with wings. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's really, really unfair there because they're super incredible animals and... They're really intelligent. Yeah. What was that from? Was that Home Alone where it was, they're rats with wings? I don't know. I remember that old school now. <laughs> Probably I don't know. But whilst I was doing research for this piece, I found out that there was a really, really cool pigeon called President Wilson. Yeah, President Wilson was um, this incredible pigeon like in World War and he basically saved an entire troop. Um, back in the World Wars, they used pigeons as carrier pigeons to like send messages. They flew back to their nests, which were obviously where kind of important generals, I guess, were. Um, and they, this this president, Peter Wilson, which is hilarious that he's a little pigeon, um, actually got shot at multiple times as he was flying over. Um, he got retired after this because he saved the lives of this entire troop. And I think he lived like 14 years after that, which is amazing. Like Really incredible, yeah, isn't really it? Cool. The next topic is quite bleak. Yeah, I think we've gone from a very high to a slightly low. So society may soon collapse, according to scientists, apparently. Um, the State of Climate report in uh, released in 2023 basically uh, used 12 global climate scientists and they discovered, and it's actually been signed, sorry, by 15,000 other mm-hmm. scientists. So it's not just these 12 scientists that found it, but I'll read out a quote quickly that it says, climate scientists have told us again and again that to maintain a stable and livable planet, we, the human race, must reduce the, the burning of fossil fuels and emissions of ga- uh, greenhouse gases by half by 2030 and end emissions altogether by 2050. I mean, so, I mean, that's been we're, around. <laughs> we're there. Yeah. <laughs> it's 2024 at this point, yeah, basically. basically. It's already there. Yeah. And that's that's the minimum that we can mm. do. And that's, was, is it the 1.5 rise? It, we're going to yeah. miss it. I of mean, we are. this isn't new information. Like, it's information that's been around for a while. And, I mean, I'm not a climate scientist, so I'm definitely not, uh, like, you know, qualified to what? give an answer. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not qualified to give, like, full advice on this. But... You know, I think every individual can do little things and, you know, if you still eat meat or you still eat animals, like even transitioning to a vegan plant-based food system can have a massive impact on the on the world. Yeah, if everybody went 90% vegan mm. immediately, yeah. this would, you know, the amount of things that this could help would be just unprecedented yeah. and we need we need to be doing that. Yeah. There mean, are so many different attributes to it. Like, I mean, there's environmental and like, obviously... I mean, I, I advocate for full veganism because, you know... Of course. <laughs> the yeah, animals all, are out of course. Yeah, yeah we all course. do. But I'm just saying for the average person, oh, yeah. it's too old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's tricky. But it's, 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 it's tricky because it's a change of um, habits, I guess. Um, but it definitely is the right thing to do. And we were talking about it just prior. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think, I think it's really worrying. And that's the first thing that's wrong to mind when I read this article, that we as individuals can... We, we can only control our own bubble and... You know, for me, that's going vegan and trying to reduce my intake in any way, um, outweigh, sorry, output in any way. And that's not fine for me personally, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying that everyone should like consider the options um, and see what you can do as an individual. Yeah, and everyone's got their own way of doing things. But exactly. Yeah. Making any difference is going to have an impact. Mm-hmm. And it's so important, especially as, you know, we've said, climate's going to climate collapse. Gonna so collapse, yeah. <laughs> do what you can. Yeah, so from one making a difference to another, um, we're going to talk about more of an animal-focused one here. Um, Direct Action Everywhere is an American-based um, organisation. They're a grassroots organisation sa- uh, founded by Wayne Shum. Um, he is an activist and lawyer, actually. He's an animal lawyer out in America, and he's recently just been sent, uh, basically sent to jail. His sentencing will be on the 30th of November, so we'll, we'll kind of 
sit tight to this see what happens. This will come out about a week before the sentencing, yeah. so we will give you an update on that. Yeah, but basically they're, they've got an open rescue campaign and their open rescue campaign is uh, comparing basically the sick and injured animals um, that you find in factory farms um, with the animals that you would see, let's say, if a dog was trapped in a car in a hot day, like you would naturally, and I think a lot of individuals would naturally be concerned that that dog would suffocate. Yeah. And that's what they've been trying to do, bring that to trial and then be, bring that comparison and say, you know, these sick and injured animals, these ducks and chickens and any animal pigs that we've rescued from these horrendous factory farms deserve the same life that our dog does. And like, you know, if we saw a dog struggling, we'd do the same thing. And he's, he now faces three years in prison because he's been charged on that. And the farm that he, you know, took the animal from, Mm. it, it, it's known for cruelty. Yeah. You know, they've they've done their research and investigated this and it's the right it's the right thing to do, mm. let's be honest. Yeah, 100%. We live in a very strange world. <laughs> we do. But this is quite interesting because the sentencing on November the 30th mm. will set an interesting precedent. Because mm. if he faces three years in jail and that happens, yeah. that is a really stark kind of mm. warning to other people who are doing this in the same position. 100%. But there are definitely people who are, like ready to take the risk. Of course. I mean... Um, no, I mean, let's talk about the people who, yeah. while this has been going on, exactly already... Like, rescued more animals yeah i mean during the the trial like during the trial period um i think two people went back out there one of them was called zoe, zoe Rooster. Rooster. yeah because of the name i remember Rooster, the name really of course, yeah. <laughs> really well and she um because basically part of the issue with the whole trial and the whole court court case is the judge actually banned any photos and video evidence so these uh the prosecution sorry like the the group of the the factory farm i guess like the lawyers for that they basically said that they adhere to animal welfare standards and they take really it's high biased. pride and all that kind of stuff <laughs> But then it's been completely obscured from the court. To, yeah, if they oh, saw God, if they mental. saw the investigation footage or they yeah, saw but they exactly can't show what's it. Happening. It's completely skewed. Yeah, it's so mental. And normally like um filtering like evidence is normally meant to help the defence, not the prosecution. Like and it's just really mental that it's obviously helped that. But yeah, let's go back to Zoe Brewster. I mean yeah, I mean, she rescued two ducks, um, River and Oakley, <laughs> um, which are great. Such American names. Yeah, do you want to read out the quote that she gave? River was on his back, struggling in vain to stand up. When I turned him over, I saw his back and wings were bloodied and bruised from his attempts to get up. He was disorientated and fell on his face multiple times. I lifted him into my arms. He stared up at me, confused, scared and in pain. As I saw his condition more closely, I felt certain he was going to die. Meanwhile, I was also looking at Oakley. She was collapsed on the ground, unable to walk at all. One of her joints was painful, infected and swollen. I lifted her up too, vowing to get both of them out of that horrible place. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but you know, when you've got like sick family members Mm. and you see somebody in pain and suffering like that, your natural response is to want to help in any way possible, whether that's to take the pain away, even if you know they're going to die. Mm -hmm. It's just, it should be a human and empathetic reaction. And it certainly was. Of course it was. But she could be prosecuted as well um, for burglary and theft. And like, yeah, I mean, like, actually going back to like the two trials that uh, DXE Direct Action Everywhere have won before this trial, um, they were both burglary and theft charges. um, And Wayne was the first one to be um, tried on conspiracy charges. But they both uh, got acquitted, so they won the cases yeah. um, because, but simply on the case that they have no monetary value for the farms mm-hmm. because they were sick and injured, which is appalling because they have, I mean, Doesn't care the value life. of life. <laughs> the, the, the value of life is yeah. how well you are, right? Yeah. So it, that's a bit of a depressing one, but um, it is. It's but a really important. important thing to follow because, it, like, like Faye said, like it does set a precedent. So we'll let you know on the thirtieth of November once we hear the update, I guess. Wonderful. Over to World Vegan Day. Yeah, so World Vegan Day was last month. Did yes, it was. Like that? <laughs> was it last <laughs> when was it? I don't oh, know. We should find that out. <laughs> Not sure. Um, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So Earthling Ed is going to be releasing a mini documentary series. And it's going to be really interesting because for everyone who knows about Earthling Ed, you know, he, he talks a lot about the philosophical standpoint to veganism, doesn't he? And in this new documentary series... He's going to be looking at the impact on slaughterhouse workers. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of slaughterhouse workers, understandably, let's be honest, turn to drugs or alcohol and they've got a lot of issues with mental health. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stress that that would put on a person to have to work in those conditions, I can't imagine it. Yeah, it's a lot. And I don't want to, it must be. Yeah, he's actually released a short already. So he's released a short um, first kind of like, I guess, a series of the, um, of the video. And I watched it and... Um, it is it is horrendous to think about 
what's going on to the animals like that that's i mean that's like the most terrifying thing that could ever happen to a being and it's the fight or flight yeah exactly. fight or flight response to yeah. them being caught you know we know we know what happens to these poor animals mm-hmm. that are held in slaughterhouses we see all the footage in it yeah it's heartbreaking but we don't often think about it we you know often will condemn because mm-hmm. it's easy to do exactly, that yeah. like the farm the farmers the people working there how mm-hmm. dare they do that oh god mm-hmm. But actually, he's looking at it from a more compassionate standpoint, yeah. isn't he? No, a lot of the time, these people are vulnerable people. Like, yeah. they're not... I mean, obviously, I'm sure there will be bad people in these industries. Like, this is not speaking as a 100% rule, but there will be vulnerable people there that, you know... I mean, one of my friends, he's now an amazing animal activist, mm. but he, Doug Moore, he was... He's actually one of the people in, interviewed here, and he was a slaughterhouse worker like you know when he got late like, for left school yeah. and because that was what he was kind of like pushed into he wanted to work with animals so they sent him to a slaughterhouse wow <laughs> so that's what he got welcome to the world yeah. <laughs> and um he talked actually about like and i remember going to one of my first vigils like it was a cow vigil when he was there and i remember talking to him and being like what's actually going on in there because i i didn't really actually know what was going on but once the that animal goes through unfortunately and he ran me through everything. It's it's horrific that he knows that and continues to do activism and like is a voice for the animals. Good. Um, but uh, yeah, like we were saying earlier, there is there is a need to be empathetic to these people that we're seen as sort not, of like the evil. Yeah, and a lot of them are bad people. Exactly. We're talking about migrant workers or yeah. people with no other opportunities to yeah. feed their family. You know, like it, it's I can't think of a worse job. Really, no. it's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah, and. A lot, we get, uh, we were talking to Issy, we've had a lot of tip-offs mm-hmm. um, from people in these conditions who've come into work and been appalled yeah. by the behaviours of other people mm-hmm. working, farmers, yeah. or the treatment of, like, the poor conditions of the animals. Mm. And so, it's a really, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's a case-by-case. Case. Yeah. And I think, I think it's also, like, I always try and think you have to be as kind as possible to everyone, and that does... You know, there, there's no winners in animal agriculture. No. There are no winners. Wins. Like, you know, no one wins. The environment doesn't win. The animals don't win. And certainly the people don't win. But yeah, it, it's, it's horrendous. And I would recommend anyone watch that documentary. It was really eye-opening. Yeah. Yeah, I'll forward to that one, actually. Um, we've also got Elfling Ed coming up on the main podcast yeah. as well next year. So Izzy's going to... going to do that one. Do that, one? <laughs> that was going to be fun. So a little plug. The next story is that XL Bully Breed dogs i'm sure you've all heard of this and you've seen all the footage that's recently been released of you know people being attacked by Mm. dogs it feels like there's been a lot of uh consideration paid to that by the press and from the 31st of october um, 31st of december even it's going to be illegal to breed from sell abandon and give away an xl bully type so any puppies that are born after the 31st of december uh, they'll have to keep the puppies or have a vet put them to sleep, which is yeah, just so I mean, sad. Yeah, it's mental. I'm seeing like lots of posts being like, Defra is almost paying me two hundred pounds yeah, to euthanize my dog. Like, how dark is this? It, and I mean, two hundred pounds is what it costs to put your dog to sleep, but it's it's still horrendous. Like, what what is going on in the world? <laughs> it's, it's just it's it's heartbreaking for all those poor puppies and dogs. Yeah. And and even now they're gonna have to be chipped mm-hmm. and muzzled in public. Yeah. And you were saying as well that in public relates to being in a car even in a car yeah um but i mean it's 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 unfortunate because like there's always been a stigma with certain dog breeds i mean the pit bulls first and um i think making a judgment on like one or two dogs and like making that an entire breed hatred is almost quite like terrifying it's yeah just it's sad. just i mean it's, it's really sad. sad but the good thing of this is that obviously there are lots of organizations even blue yes. cross are offering so much support on to how to teach your dog to get used to walking with a muzzle um if they've never been muzzle trained and stuff like that so there is a lot of help out there um to kind of like make keep your dog safe um because obviously the last thing we want is your dog to be seized no. and you can actually get a criminal conviction if you um are not being responsible um complying with the rules um it just makes me sad again it's ir- like a few irresponsible people again yeah. at the end of the day and it yeah it's never the dog's fault never. so it's the owners unfortunately but you know it's 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 something that you can kind of manage in terms of trying to get that support Absolutely. and following the legislation i guess and yeah it's it's sad but there's a there's a there's there, there. there's something there available um, okay, this is not a good story. No. Uh, a group of students have reportedly attacked a sheep. Anybody who is watching this right now has heard of this story. Mm. It's just broken. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. So the police are investigating reports of four agricultural college students that went up to the downs and attacked a sheep. So this has come from Plumpton College students mm. and they were working as apprentices. 
for a farmer, Michael, and, and do you want to talk about what they did to the sheep? It says here, the four picked up the sheep, which was grazing on the downs and kicked it, they's head, by the way, um, their head. They were, were still alive. Then they split them open, um, stuck a firework inside of them and blew them up. This is <laughs> it's just so horrendous. Four students have been arrested only we think at the moment only two of them are responsible but the other two were there to win yeah. us. um but let's be honest this is the behavior of so that's this is sociopathic mm -hmm. it's cruel yeah. it's complete lack of empathy and the good news is that other people on this course mm -hmm. have you know pointed to this and are yeah disgusted by it like everybody should be yeah i mean the farmer found out about it because four other students or a group of students or something were so shocked by hearing what had happened and went to their, I guess, tutor, because yeah. that's what he would be, and said this. And he's gone, obviously, to um, the authorities, whatever. But even him, I mean, he said that the college has only suspended them, but they should be expelled. Yeah, I, I agree. And, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's suspended right now because it's the yeah, trials on yeah, going. Yes, yeah. but if they're not expelled, there's something extremely wrong with that. Yeah, I don't because think... if they're not expelled, they could go into the animal agriculture industry and be farmers or work on yeah. farms. Like, and also that's crazy. A, as far as I'm concerned, that's a what like even beyond that, it's a mm. wider danger to society. If you're that sick yeah. that you can do something like that, yeah, that's it's yeah, it, it is a bit crazy, but um, obviously that's individual actions, yeah, and, and that's quite shocking that there are those individuals out there that are very that. sick individual people and quite young. I think they were like 19 and 20, so like you well, know, must have wrong, right? 100%, but yeah, shocking. Um, on to slightly more positive things <laughs> yeah. now. We're gonna end with like two very positive stories, um, <laughs> hopefully to like end try our best, <laughs> we'll try our best, but um. Crispiracy. There's a new mm. documentary coming out, and it's the co-creator of Cowspiracy. He's he's basically come out with another one. I mean, I'm really interested. I'm about so, this. Excited so excited. So excited. Yeah, I, I don't actually know when it's exactly coming out, but I'm really really excited for it, and I think it'll be like such a great uh, documentary because it, it is like working. I mean, this isn't the title. It's it's uh, challenging the spirituality and and veganism because I mean I know from doing street outreach, they're always like, oh no, I'm I'm Christian, and it says that I'm okay to eat animals in the Bible or whatever. And um, and it's not bashing on any any no. spirituality like beliefs and stuff. It's it's just it's so interesting because yeah. it's going to look at things like obviously Hinduism, exactly, like vegetarian yeah. as vegetarianism's just kind of preached mm. from the get go, and it's also going to look at is there actually a spiritually sound way to mm. to kill an animal? So it's probably going to look at halal, and mm. we're going to look at yeah. I loved. I mean, in a tying back to earthling, Eddie, but the whole idea of taking on what you eat yeah. and what you consume into your body, you know, the spirit of that animal. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. And I know from his other documentaries, he's so good. At, mm. He's so good. So, And I think it's really good to put one out there because like I said, before you speak to so many individuals on the street that are like Muslim or Jewish or like Christian and like they use their scriptures um, yeah. as a reason for them it's to continue to eat animals. And like, actually, no, none of the none of the like scriptures say that you have to eat animals. They say that the choice is there. Yeah, like I mean, Genesis, know. got the Garden of Adam and exactly, Eve. Yeah, it was all very. It was vegetarian. Yeah. So, so I think it's, it'll be really, really interesting to see how they how they work that through and how they discuss it and bring the ethics of the animal agriculture industry in there. Um, last one, the last good okay. story. Yes, RSPCA members vote in favour of plant-based cuisine. Woohoo! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> About time. Although there is a bit of a caveat to this yeah. story, isn't there, in terms of the way that this was done? Yeah, so, I mean, 76% of its members voted for plant-based um, catering. So, I mean, that's still not 100%. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so, I mean, it's weird because obviously the RSPCA is meant to be... The, well, it's, it is the biggest charity that's meant to protect animals. Um, caveat with that is that it's only companion animals, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's just really interesting to see that uh, so many people are now on board with that, which is good. Um, and even if they're not, this is sorry for plant-based catering in-house and out-house yeah. for events. So it, it is amazing. It's a big thing. It's great. And it's kind of come off the back of pressure from students, you know, yeah. at universities. So students out there keep up the excellent work mm -hmm. because... 
lobbying for change is actually having a ripple effect. Exactly, yeah, definitely. I mean, like uh, another group, Animal Rising, we work with them quite a bit sometimes, and they've uh, they helped basically pass loads of these, like, like you know, with their um, plant based unities campaign, uh, which is incredible, by the way, if you've not looked into that. Um, and they basically describe the vote, I'll read this quote out again, as a step in the right direction. However, they've added that it's an empty gesture if it continues to give meat and fish products its seal of approval, which is very true. I mean, at, at, like, you know, it's also like we were saying, like, do as I say, not as I do, yeah. <laughs> sort of vibe. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a bit of a pity. But it is a really, really good story to do. Like, maybe we're seeing the future where RSPCA might actually be the RSPCA. Oh, <laughs> me out. <laughs> but it's maybe. a very fair comment. Yeah, well, we shall see though. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it'll lead to a really nice, um, yeah, support system for all animals. And that includes the animals sat in factory farms. And once certain industries start to do this and roll it out, then, you know, that's just going to be the knock-on effect for everybody else. So every little bit... I might just quote Supermux now. Every little bit does help. (laughs) Don't get your edge from them. (laughs) Yeah, we're advertising, but no. (laughs) But yeah, no, I think it would be really good. And it's good to see this change going on. And um, like I said, like it's it's catering for outside as well. So maybe we'll get some farmers trying plant-based options and being like, hey, this is a growing market. Why don't I just transition? Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of, like, you know, support out there to transition yeah, your farms. There are, there are, and it's to move towards more of a plant-based direction and less mm. reliance on animal agriculture exactly. and everything like that. So there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. <laughs> We've had a very dark and bleak Minnesota, but I swear we ended with hope. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. And if you want to tune in for more singing, let us know. <laughs> no. <laughs>